Hello and welcome to The Last Standy, a board game podcast coming to you from three exciting countries across Europe. I'm joined here today by joined here today by Alexis. From Belgium, bonjour. And Alessio. Dall'Italia, hi. Hi, and I'm your host, Ven. And today is a scintillating, spirited, sublime solo special as we're going to be combing our way through the people's top 200 solo board games, the people's choice. Uh, we'll start, though, as usual, with a little bit of a cat. <laughs> uh, there's a lot going on, actually. Uh, you have the small kid with a fever. The wife just recovered from that, so hopefully it's the same fever because the kid has not been tested for COVID yet. So hopefully is everything all right, but the kid is uh, kind from the grandparents uh, across the road here and I have to fetch because uh, it has not been tested and my wife is still at work and there are workers working on central eating because, well, uh, December is, uh, well, either approaching or uh, we are in the middle of it, depending on when you listen to this. And uh, so there's a lot happening. But uh, a lot of happening on the game inside too. At least uh, I I am quickly b- become the a big fan of uh, Rift Force, uh, the game from One More Time Games. Uh, uh, by the time of now, there should be a review online, so uh, you can see my opinions there. And uh, uh, I played a lot of Kabuto Sumo. Because that game has, uh, has a version which is actually very competitive and strategic, but it also has a simpler version for kids, and my kids love it. So, a lot of, of gaming app. There's uh, Cora Quest kind of approaching in EU, so that's another good news. And that's, that basically wraps the, the week. What about you, Alexis? Uh, what about me? Well, very good news uh, unrelated to, to board games, but I, I got a new job. Woohoo! Related to, to board games, but I, I got a new job. Woohoo! Yeah, I'll be starting very soon, which is pretty, pretty fun. Uh, it's good after uh, a year of unemployment due to COVID. Oh, oh, oh I, I have to just chime in and say that this is not good for the podcast because we, we, we won't have the episode the edit day that this is not good for the podcast because we, we, we won't have the episode the edit day anymore. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I, I'll still be able to do the, to do the <laughs> editing. Um, I'll, I'll have, a, I'll have plenty, plenty of free time, so still a good thing. Yeah, Alexis is in such huge demand that he was able to set his own terms, and one of them was, I still want, Thanks. yeah, Alexis is in such huge demand that he was able to set his own terms, and one of them was, I still want some time to do this stupid podcast that doesn't really generate <laughs> anything and costs me time and aggro and grief, but I do the editing, so and they went, yeah, yeah. no, we, we need you, so yes, whatever you need. <laughs> I actually mentioned my uh, the, in my interview uh, and and spun it as a as a very positive thing regarding my my character and my uh, oh, my skills. Spun it as a very Ooh. positive thing. You don't need to spin it. I I already like when we discussed this previously. I was like, you do all the editing. That is like something quite big. I mean, it's a whole lot of things you got to organize from a whole bunch of people, including some people who just they record an entirely blank track for a whole episode. You know, and you have to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's I, a thing that happened yeah <laughs> I, I i've also um i've also uh, played on the fact that um uh how do you call that again um a game mechanic the, the 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 study of like how a game functions and how a game is, is organized i i spun it as a, the thing that i i was deeply interested in and that that plays onto my uh my duties that i will have as a, a process analyst which is you know Interesting, fun. Uh, I'll I'll see if it's a good job or if it crushes my see if it's a good job or if it crushes my soul. Uh, more on that later. Uh, I've I've also done something that I cannot talk about uh, right now, but uh, in a few episodes maybe there will be a, a mystery information about a, a game that we can talk about for now. So, ooh, yeah. Well, actually, uh, I, I have this. So. Ooh, yeah. Well, actually, uh, I, I have the same yeah. information too, and I, I think it's kind of the same game. <laughs> and I, I'm pretty sure that Fen has also a lot of information regarding that. So, uh, lo- <laughs> lots of mysteries in our in future episode of The Last ND. Ooh. And Fen, uh, what of The Last ND? Ooh. And Fen, uh, what about you? Well, I think the biggest news is today was the first snowfall of the year here. 
it's still sticking around a little bit. Cool. So, yep, that's um, it's a bit earlier than it was last year, I think. Uh, but you know, obviously, we don't have the worst of it coming until January, February, and last year, March and April. So mm. springtime snow. We'll have to see what happens this time. <laughs> um, I have just received my copy of Furnace, um, oh. the board game. Yep. Yep. The person designing the insert was thinking um, it's got some lovely slots to hold all the wooden tokens and then just these horribly oversized wells for everything else, apart from the cards. So it's like they went, we want this for the cards, leave room for if they sleeve them. Nice. We've got the discs here, and then do whatever you like for the rest. Just make some... I can see why on Board Game Geek there's a guide about cutting Furnace's box size down, even though it's... To me, I'm like, why would you chop up a box? Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that, that was the guide from uh, W. Eric Martin, right? Yes. yes, yeah. yes yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I cl- clicked on it because the same reason you slow down when you're going past a car crash. You can... <laughs> Is it nasty? Kind of. I mean, I get what he's doing, and it's, it is. It, I totally understand why you would cut down furnace because it, there's not even like there's room for expansions within the box because they filled everything up with air underneath the insert. So, and uh, yeah, just before we started, I was complaining. Just yeah, I mean, literally everything's going out of that and straight into the main war chest box because there's room for it. And then I got this nice looking fake book that I don't know, maybe I'll uh, I'll put the keys to Ecto-1 in there or something. <laughs> you know, someone can find it years later next to my mold collection. Um, and the other West Kingdom series, but I'll talk about those later, not to bury the lead. Um, and I just, just got uh, from my local stockist uh, a few more magic cards. I found they had a bunch of um, staples for Commander. They support more standard play in the local area. So when things fall off, they just have them like, please buy these. So I bought some cards that will never be printed again for, uh, as they say, pennies on the pound. Wow. Oh. Yeah, and nothing nothing super fancy. Not going to blow you away. It's not like when I opened my first... Oh. Yeah, and nothing, nothing super fancy. Not going to blow you away. It's not like when I opened my first ever booster pack since like 2012 and opened a Mana uh, Crypt, which I did. <laughs> um, that's a 140 to 160 euro card. Um, and I had the immediate problem of like, oh, this is worth a lot. Oh, this is really good in Commander. And I had the immediate problem of like, oh, this is worth a lot. Oh, this is really good in Commander. I can't play it because nobody I play with has one. So if I put this down on turn one, suddenly I'm two turns ahead of everyone else and it's not fun. So it sits in a folder and I'm thinking about selling it and getting some lower powered stuff instead. That's unfortunate. Selling it and getting some lower powered stuff instead. That's unfortunate. It happens, you know. I, not everybody can play like at a high competitive level. Not everyone wants to. And actually, as much as I enjoy watching a competitive EDH, you know, slash commander game, I'm not sure I'd ever want to play in one because they're like very complex and very, like, very complex and very sweaty. A lot of tryharding. Um, I'm not super into tryharding in board games. I'm more into the narrative, which might come to a surprise to some people, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's basically it, really. Um, apart from that, it's just been old, uh, usual. Just kind of we're having to plan and plot plan for the winter because obviously it, we're on an island. Um, it's not as like our our heating comes not from like a central heating system. We have to um, burn wood for part of it because uh, it's clean burning and. It's hot nice. burning, it smells nice, uh, and it's fast growing, and it's sustainably produced in the local area. Um, and then we have a, an air conditioner, heat slash heater, and the electricity on the island is mostly green as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but you can't run. Isn't it? Isn't it getting dark extremely early uh, where you are right now? Yeah, it is. It is. Hang on. Uh, sunset today. Is oh oh two minutes earlier than yesterday. Fifteen twenty today. It was fifteen twenty two yesterday. Oh, that's so as we, me. And it's um it's gonna get dark during this podcast. So it, you... it's it's weird, um, but I'm pretty used to it. And I actually have a uh, natural sunlight lamp I paint with. So 
Uh, so, that's my seasonal affective disorder comforter. So you are basically there uh, at sunset recording the podcast with a virtual stove and on it. No, I'm not in my game room. <laughs> in I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in one of the two offices we have in the building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, because a game room is not enough. <laughs> Yeah, well, if I give, if I recorded in the game room, which is a sloped attic, um, uh, like full extent of the house room, the acoustics would be terrible. Full extent of the house room, the acoustics would be terrible. So if any if any of you is going to visit Sweden, uh, drop an email to Fen. Uh, he will <laughs> and, you and, there. And, <laughs> And, and as a notoriously antisocial individual, I will promptly ignore it and apologize months later when you say, well, I will promptly ignore it and apologize months later when you say, why didn't you respond? Because that would make me feel very awkward. The, don't, <laughs> we do, don't go we do hunt, have a guest house. Down. No. Don't go hunting down podcasters. No, no. <laughs> um, well. What was it? Um, uh, the professor from Tulerian Community Co- um, uh, the professor from Tulerian Community College when he was like starting out, he used to still be a tenured professor. Um, I think, I think I can't remember Boston maybe or somewhere like that. But it was, it, he was he was on the registry for the um, for the staff, and so he was just sort of beginning. And a couple of fans up and searched all of like the American. Uh, registries and found him and just turned up when he was finishing like teaching for the day and they're like oh professor we love what you're doing um uh, do you want to play like some commander with us and he was like oh god no d- don't do this i understand and appreciate like and appreciate like but this is really not not okay <laughs> yeah this is yeah. this is kind of a, a breach yeah. of our of privacy yeah, yeah, he was like, so no, he, he, they they brought some load of stuff and like they were like, do you want to? I think they wanted to draft commander with him and everything, and it's like, I, I just finished working and I want to go home. I, I just finished working and I want to go home, and this is after my job, which is almost as bad as turning up on my doorstep. Yeah, you know, running to somebody while they're walking around the streets and everything, fantastic, you know, um, and get their signature then. But not like Alessio, I can't just meet up with people and, and have a have a game or something. I freak out. It it needs to be uh, planned in advance. Everything. Plan everything, yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh hmm. I was gonna say, yeah, but that's I think that's enough nattering. Let's uh let's Game Geeks one player guild do a people's choice it used to be top hundred, but this year I think it's this year they've done a top 200. Um, I'm not maybe I, I can't remember when they switched, but they, it's definitely bigger than it used to be. But that's not surprising. I think that they they switched just this year. You're like, oh yeah, it was this. Um, apparently, 953 people voted this year. Um, so hey, look at us, solo board gamers. There are literally dozens of us. <laughs> <laughs> we matter. Uh... Um, that's actually an increase uh, this year, right? Like it they is. Were this year, right? Like it they is, were like yeah. 600, 700 before. Yeah, yeah, it's like about 300 more people. There was 618 last time, so it is an increase. And I think part of that has been the COVID year has given people a chance to sit down and go, oh, actually, you know, solo board gaming, actually, you know, solo board gaming can be a lot of fun. Um, and like for myself, I find video gaming solo can be quite stressful. Um, I was playing Deep Rock Galactic yesterday, just like for 15 minutes, and I was I went, you know what? I'll play a hazard level five mission. Sure, that's not going to be a problem. And <laughs> it was the most stressful and sweaty 20 minutes I have dealt with at playing as a scout and having to grapple around the entire map while a <laughs> horde of glyphs chased after me. And I was like, I'm not doing this again. This is no, this is not relaxing. <laughs> this is uh- not. Um, one thing that I, I've noticed, uh, in this, uh, in, um, one thing that I, I've noticed, uh, in this, uh, in this list is that a lot of those games, I wouldn't, I'm, I'm not sure I would qualify them as being, uh, solo games. Yeah. The... I, a lot of those are games that are primarily multiplayer, but mm. can be played solo. Like, for example, games that are primarily multiplayer, but mm. can be played solo. Like, for example, a Kingdom Death or Gloomhaven. 
can be yeah. played solo, but I, I, I don't think I would ever mention them as solo games. Well, 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 well. Actually, I have to say I usually vote here. I didn't vote this. To say I usually vote here. I didn't vote this year because I was most in most interested in the results actually. But uh, I, I am part of the one player guild, and uh, it happens that uh, actually hardcore solo gamers are more interested in the interested in the solo variant of the multiplayer games than the actual solo games. I think a lot of solo games we have uh, we have talked about in our uh, podcast uh, all lie around uh, 100, 110 position here. Mm. I have a lot of really, really good uh, solo game, primarily made at solo games. I can't think of that many good multiplayer game that actually that function is uh better as a solo game than as a multiplayer one i've got five of them sitting on my desk right now and the only reason i'm not going to say the names of them is because they're in the list so... oh yeah I and mean, it's definitely going to come out it's it's one uh where you you play in a submarine and we'll probably mm. talk about it later <laughs> yeah that one though i would say that yes yeah, a purely solo solo game i'd say but uh i i would say it's uh it, it has a multiplayer mode but the solo mode game is a lot more mm. fleshed out uh, makes it a better solo game definitely absolutely uh we should stop being vague about it and, uh, yeah start to start going on yeah. So the the idea is we're kind of just going to, there's because there's 200 games, we can't do what some people have managed to do and sit down for several hours and talk about each and every single one. Partly my jam. Honestly, um, the only way to go through all of them would do would be to do a, a, a version of the Pokemon rap, but with a <laughs> <this> game, <laughs> not game names. Oh dear. Yes, indeed. So the first like 150, we're going to, just like mention some notable things that were like oh that until we get near the end and there may be some that we're just going to be like either skipping entirely because none of us have played it or we're just like oh well it's okay yeah um i haven't played it solo i played it multi yeah so for example i was very surprised to see it in 199 ether fields yeah. which um i i love the theme but I love the miniatures, but this has been a game that I've just consistently heard people always be like, there's a but. Every time they have something to say about Etherfields, there's always a but following with it. So I was surprised. Mm. Well, I mean, it's it's exactly number two, uh, 199. So, you know, I exactly number two, uh, 199. So, you know, I it, it might it might be the reason why it's the... the the, the smallest number of that 200 list. Uh, it's like an Awakening Rim games. Uh, so you basically have a perfectible game which has a great narrative. You basically have a perfectible game which has a great narrative. Yeah, I, I think looking at the stats that they've got on the page, because um, they list like average votes and number of voters and everything. This, this is a new entry for 2021. Um, and it seems to be heavily weighted by 2021 um and it seems to be heavily weighted by a few people who are like this is i really like this because it, it even got a number one vote out yep. of, so which suggests to me that there's a some serious fans who absolutely loved it and it's just managed to dip it into the bottom of this i'll be surprised if it's here next year not because to dip it into the bottom of this i'll be surprised if it's here next year not because it's necessarily a bad game. I, as I say, I think it's more of a um, a complicated, troubled game <laughs> with some good elements to it and some bad. So it's very much down to taste. But I think it's just who's going to be getting Ether Fields in the future years. It, but I think it's just who's going to be getting Ether Fields in the future years. It's it's just going to be on a few people's shelves and maybe the odd person will chase it up in the secondhand market. But we can't we can't dwell on it much further because this is still top two hundred. If we're going to be this long on just yeah. one nine nine, yeah. we're going to have to record like twelve of these episodes. <laughs> yeah, or like twelve of these episodes. <laughs> yeah, because I want to get onto one nine six because it's Shadows of Brimstone, like <laughs> yes. all of Shadows of Brimstone. Um, I gotta say this is basically a Warhammer Quest reskin with cowboys on the top. There are differences in the system, okay? I'm not knocking it. I own this game. 
I just wanted to mention it because my brother forgot, in quotations, <laughs> to send these over and still hasn't confirmed whether he has them or not in his possession. So I don't even know if they got lost while being shipped, oh, no. which I doubt. So so I, I'm looking at this now. I really wanted to write about Shadows of Brimstone because it's a hot mess. Like, it's fun, but it's that same kind of crazy fun that, this way, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> you could be better. And other times, you're just having so much fun. Uh, so that's it. I just want to say, like... It's a big, heavy game to be in at 196. It's a lot of weight to carry for one person, um, mechanically. But, uh, yeah, Shadows of Brimstone, I can see why it's there. Okay, I 5, which is Iron Elm, which is a very weird solo game because it's uh, on the Game Crafter, which, he, he, if you don't know, it's a website when you can craft an entire game starting from components and you can put it on sale and stuff like that. I have to say, I got uh, this notified by an Italian podcast actually. Uh, I won't ma- uh, drop names here, but if you're interested, just just ask. Uh, that's interesting. It's a very cool dungeon crawler. You just, uh, you just pick cards, you get dungeon cards which are uh, two doors basically and you choose your path uh, going on it plays solo it plays automatically it has a lot a few things in common with one deck dungeon but we'll get over it and uh, it's a very very fun game for actually the the small cost and the fact that this is basically uh, the, the the artwork is is uh, naive is kind of very si- simple but it does its work so it's very fun and, and I'm happy that it is listed in this list because just being there and just being five position ahead of uh, uh, because just being there and just being five position ahead of uh, uh, either fields it's a great achievement for this game so kudos to them I never heard of it so mm. yeah yep um, I'll say 193 very quickly that's Roads and Boats um, its inclusion on this list means I'm finally going to pull the trigger and get very quickly that's Roads and Boats um, its inclusion on this list means I'm finally going to pull the trigger and get a copy of it I've been <laughs> I've been an iron about this forever because it's a splotter game and they're not cheap uh, but um, I'm going to get it and then uh, we have at 188 um, Legacy of Dragon Holt at 188 um Legacy of Dragon Holt, which yep. is the Fantasy Flight Terranoth set, LGBTQ plus friendly, <laughs> amazing piece of work. Like, it, considering it's basically a expanded choose your own venture adventure style game, like the old fighting factors, really do matter in where the story goes. Uh, it's it's you can play it with multiple players as well. Um, is originally designed like as a party decision making kind of cover lots of skills together sort of game i've played through the whole campaign um and because i'm a terrible person i <laughs> met whenever it's my day to that <laughs> sorry it's the worst game i played all year one um, one seven eight one seven eight go one seven eight no 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 we, we've got <laughs> one eight three first for myself and alexis so alexis you can take it away <laughs> um, I, I've yet to, to sink a lot of hours into it, but it's some extremely fun mechanic to cover the trick weapon of the, the Blood Bowls, uh game. And I think it's really, really ingenious in a, in a lot of ways. And its main problem for me is that the game uh, has a time limit and it's too fast and you are forced to always move forward. Mm. And I just want to engage more with the, with the game rather than having to uh, almost dodge enemies and just run forward to finish the level as, f- as fast as possible. I want to fight with it. I want to have fun and just to enjoy the, the, the combat system. But it's it has a lot of really fun mechanics and really, really interesting little bits. So yeah, uh, great little game. I Yeah, uh, great little game. I, I want to play more of it. I have yet to have enough experience with it. But I know that Fen uh, absolutely loved it. So Yes, yeah. The um, combat mechanics are wonderful. And I get what you're saying about you want more time because it jo- engaging in the combat against the monsters is really enjoyable. It jo- engaging in the combat against the monsters is really enjoyable. This has been a great puzzle one player. It's been a wonderful like um, cooperative experience two player. I'm just really sad that they are that this is a Simon game. So 
we're just not yeah. going to see everything out on retail. And I was very frustrated in particular, just not yeah. going to see everything out on retail. And I was very frustrated in particular that I think, I think it's four of the hunters are in like exclusive to uh, the, the, the quick Kickstarter stuff, which is like, that's no bueno, man. That's not on. That's no. always the big problem with fun games that they, you always feel like you're it's always the big problem with fun games that they, you always feel like you're, not getting the full value for your money because you came in after the reviews and after the game came out and it just it just does it's not a good experience for anybody that uh came in late yeah yeah it's a shame it's it's a super uh came in late yeah yeah it's a shame it's it's a super game though i really hope to see the mechanics come back in something else in the future because yeah. that whole card based combat um and a flipping of weapons is super cool i think people who know me know i'm a fan of if you do something with a card do something on the back and if you're flipping back and forth and forth between those i'm very excited yes yes um <laughs> I'm not going to talk in detail about it because it's older uh, relative appears on the list, but at 181 is Jump Drive, um, which is an excellent introduction to the Race for the Galaxy uh, system and has a nice like solo campaign that you can play. Um, yeah. Which is, which is of course board game. Uh, was it board game Circle Jerks' favorite game, Patchwork? Yes. <laughs> yeah. M maybe we, we will have time to talk about this. But uh, this is uh, a great filler game, and it's uh, one versus one game which has a great, decent, very good solo mode. It's a lot interesting, and uh, well, uh, it's actually my favorite game from U Rosenberg. So <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a very popular two-player game. It's a hell of a meme within the Reddit. Can, I'm not sure if any of them listen to us, but if you ever do, you know, keep doing what you're doing because it <laughs> cracks me up. Uh, this one is kind of falling. It was 66 in 2019. It's 162. It's 178. So it's maybe people are preferring it actually as a two-player game rather than a one-player game. Um, yeah, and... we'll have to see how the game rather than a one-player game. Um, yeah, we'll and have to see how it goes. Th that's probably also the fact that there are more options today. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, just above it is Mini Rogue, which is a game I can't talk about because I can't manage to get my hands on a copy, and I really want to. I love the name, I love the concept, uh, but I can't talk a copy, and I really want to. I love the name, I love the concept, uh, but I can't talk about it at all. There's one six eight, which is tiny towns, and we won't talk about it anyway. So, but the tiny towns is the very best pod, you know, <laughs> a game, board game that's ever been on this podcast. And if you uh, haven't listened to the episode where I talk about tiny towns, a board game that's ever been on this podcast. And if you uh, haven't listened to the episode where I talk about tiny towns, you should go back and listen to it. You'll find it. Don't worry, it's not listed in any of the episode names, but it is in there. <laughs> oh, uh, so, so I shouldn't tell them the number now. Absolutely but. not. No, that's no. a hidden Easter egg for them to locate. Fence review of tiny. Absolutely but. not. No, that's no. a hidden Easter egg for them to locate. Fence review of tiny towns. L less, less than ten. <laughs> um, one seven three. There's a game I keep meaning to get on the table, which is Orleans. Uh, I, I have it. it yet. I really want to play it. I've got it, but getting to it is. I really want to play it. I've got it, but getting to it is. It's taking time to get there, um, and then High Frontier for All, which we're not going to talk talk about much on this podcast um, because the it turns out that the designer's not exactly the best person in the world, but the game the designer's not exactly the best person in the world, but the game is is very good. It's the only one I own from him. It's the only one I will keep. Um, the map is gorgeous. He's, he's well known for sea lining, which you can Google if you want to find out what that's mm. about. Um, yeah. And then I think at the nice, well, nice part, well, nice part two, number 169 is Australia, which Alexis yeah. wanted to talk about briefly. I, I, I just w wanted to mention, I've yet to play the game. I have no idea if it's good or not, but it reminded me that um, Shelf Stories mentioned it in, in a, a video that they, they posted recently, and it's a great video, and I would... Uh, they, they posted recently and it's a great video and I would uh, use the, the, the position of Australia as a 169 as an excuse for people to go check up um, Shelf Stories, which is a YouTube channel 
that talks about board game and that episode on, on it was was pretty fun uh it's on our discord in the um old board game uh it's on our discord in the um old board game section yeah i can thoroughly recommend if you want somebody who thinks deeply about board games and about how they can impact on others and is very good in expressing how you may not have considered the the impact on various different people um it's a great uh, the concept of um some of the things that are talked about within that uh video included the term whitewashing which our next uh, number was uh, uh, put their hands up to doing it and said they hadn't realized which is one six five yeah paleo yes paleo um which we don't well shut up and there's even some redheads in there um and none of that existed in the time period at all like we've got no evidence everyone was dark skinned within the paleolithic era the lighter skinned genes didn't come along until a lot later on which yeah. is why there's not that many light skinned people in the world totally you know yeah, yeah the weird it feels... yeah but they 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 very maturely put their hands up and said they were working so hard to include a spread of gender and covering that that they weren't paying attention it's not the fault of anyone other than like just the people overseeing the whole thing and they didn't mean to do it and they're gonna test that paleo is a great game it plays a lot modular and that's super cool because uh, actually you it uh, boosts its longevity basically and uh, it's very very good i, I played it uh, exclusively solo i i can't see the with uh, many people but since it is uh, not the game the wife likes uh, it will probably wait for a bit more but mm, I, I, I can i can say it plays pretty well with um younger younger gamers it's fairly accessible to get into because the concepts as long as you're yeah. operating the bits and pieces um this i'm not going to search this as long as they're at that point where they could take out punishing paleo likes to be at times <laughs> Uh, then, um, uh, 163, I just briefly want to mention The Gallerist, which is, uh, the Vidal second, Lacerda, yeah. yeah, yeah, the second best solo game he's put out, but, yeah. yeah, yeah, the second best solo game he's put out, but probably the most accessible, um, if you're ever looking to get into Lacerda's games, The Gallerist is the one that you should go for, I really should do a proper full review on it in one of the podcast episodes in the future because mm. it's so accessible. I'd and be interested in the podcast episodes in the future because mm. it's so accessible. I'd and be interested in that. Yeah, it's it's great. It's like what if uh, the the what if modern art was really popular and terrible, like it's really <laughs> bad modern art. Um, but it's a it's a beautiful beautiful game and very good solo mode. Um, beautiful game and very good solo mode. Um, then just below that's Pandemic Legacy. Yeah, yeah. I I'm actually very surprised that it's so low. Um, the, I mean, the, uh, actually, yeah. I took a note about this. Uh, there are a lot of uh, Pandemic games, the the highest uh, places in the in the ranking for the live podcast so uh, for the, for actually our recording because it's not live but uh, what i want to say is that uh, pandemic uh, mode uh, pandemic game mode is that there is pandemic iberia and uh, pandemic fall of rome above of this and i think both are better than uh, season one but uh, yeah there are a lot of pandemics here pandemic um season zero is still my favorite the whole bunch uh i don't think uh, season one actually made me angry pandemic the the base game as solo, a solo player the base game uh, really the, the... yeah yeah season one is uh, season one is hot garbage if i could expunge it from his, his annals of history <laughs> i would and we would just start with season two, zero and then go straight to season two and season one would just be like people would go what happened to season mm -hmm. one and they go well fen got one wish and this is what what fen chose to do was have it erased <laughs> <laughs> we are allowed to remember that fen erased it but we yes not, not what it was like <laughs> yeah. because then, then i don't have to remember what the twist was which is when i put down the game and went i'm done well um mm. i think that by the time down the game and went i'm done well um mm. I think that by the time it was out, it was actually a good pandemic. 
because uh, I, I agree with Alexis that Pandemic Legacy is, a, all Pandemic Legacy games are funnier that uh, their, uh, a, all Pandemic Legacy games are funnier that uh, their uh, regular versions, except maybe Pandemic Fall of Rome, which I loved. But uh, I have to say, as a solo gamer, uh, a lot of the fun in destroying stuff, taking, uh, I have to say, as a solo gamer, uh, a lot of the fun in destroying stuff, taking decisions and uh, attaching stickers and changing something forever is kind of wasted with just one people, well, with just one person, mm. because, well, uh, with one people, well, with just one person. Because, well, uh, with whom are you sharing this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't have the fun of turning up for one game of Risk, Le uh, Risk Legacy, winning and naming one of the towns on the map forever <laughs> Big Chungus. Legacy, winning and naming one of the towns on the map forever <laughs> Big Chungus. And then knowing that everybody's going to have to play future games with Big Chungus being one of the important objectives that they've got to go for, <laughs> which I did, and I would not, I would not take it back. Um, you, you know, I had a lot of fun with this collection. It's, uh, it should be remembered a lot more than it is. Mm. Well, it did, it did pave the way. So, yeah, uh, a few, a few entry down. We have Parks, which is another great. Yeah. Um, but 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 we got ones in the middle in between. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Uh, there's on my <laughs> which is oh. really good, and I am somebody who used to live with someone who owned his own pinball machine, and as a consequence, I love pinball. There's because when you don't have to pay to play, it's amazing fun. <laughs> you, you <laughs> it's know, a lot of fun, yeah. There's an entire pinball machine subgenre on board games. Like uh, two months ago, about two different pinball games. There are a lot yeah. of them. I, I'm not following them, but there's a culture uh, about them. I would recommend, if nothing else, watching um, Tom's uh, Shut Up and Sit Down review of Super Pinball, and he really nails like how well they've done in trans. So yeah, uh, there's also Set a Watch at one four nine. Yeah, which I'm waiting for. So Still and Lahav, <laughs> yeah, Lahav at one four eight which I used to own and I sold and every once in a while I think, you know, I kind of miss the half. And then I look at my notes from when I was playing it. I'm like, maybe I should the half. And then I look at my notes from when I was playing it. I'm like, maybe I shouldn't get it again. <laughs> um, it's not my favorite Uwe game, but the artwork and the setting always, I'm always like, ooh. And then now we've got Parks. Yeah. One yes, more which is... Which is a game that I would say is as good solo as it is uh, multiplayer. Which, which is a game that I would say is as good solo as it is uh, multiplayer. Which is very hard to do design-wise, but this one just works so well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's a beautiful game. We've talked about it a lot. So. Yes, we have. We have. We we've talked about it in a podcast episode, so we won't dwell on it here. But yes, yeah, solo. We we've talked about it in a podcast episode, so we won't dwell on it here. But yes, yeah, solo fantastic um castles of burgundy that game four. Yeah, yeah 144 <laughs> that game is i bought the app to try and get into learning to play this game and i cannot get past the tutorial in the app it is so frustrating uh, castles of tutorial in the app it is so frustrating uh, castles of burgundy the board game as well looks it's kind of not pretty um yeah. but i've really got to play it because I, I've seen people play it. They have an immensely fun time, and it looks great. And I'm like, come on, come on, just, just come on, Fen, just, just, it's okay, just open the box. Come on, just, just come on, Fen, just, just, it's okay, just open the box, just yeah. play it. Yeah. And I'm like, no, um, I, I, no, I've got other things I could do right now. I'm gonna go rake the leaves. I, I, <laughs> I think I saw a video review of Castle of Burgundy one once, which said. Uh, uh okay open the uh okay open the box hey, here have some points so roll the dice here have some points uh flip the rule book here have some points you do points Ooh. with everything <laughs> so i th i think more games should give people points for interacting with the rule book. <laughs> no that, that doesn't happen actually it's kind of a bit of messy because you are supposed to be competitive about it so i think that uh, 
uh, having it as a solo game is actually an announcement of on the concept of the game because yeah. uh, you are just trying to beat your score and that's nothing probably... wrong with that yeah <laughs> yeah Let's back to that one um oh blackout hong kong is a game i keep considering and then not getting uh just mm. just before that there's a yep. thunderball uh apache leader uh, which is an extremely dull war game about planes um company and if you if you like military stuff and you're ready to to read the hundreds of pages of rules and try to get into that mindset it can be very uh really fun uh we're not going to go uh too much uh deep mm. into that one but it's it's fun for uh, a certain t- uh, type too much uh deep mm. into that one but it's it's fun for uh, a certain t- uh, type of people yeah um at number 135 there's glenmore 2 chronicles and now glenmore keeps on coming up on my radar over and over again and every time i see that it's glenmore 2 and i'm like but i don't know what happened in the f- every time i see that it's glenmore 2 and i'm like but i don't know what happened in the first one but where is glenmore 1 it's basically yeah. unavailable anymore I, I know it doesn't matter. It's just it's a war. I can't get myself to play Glenmore Two without but, playing Glenmore One. But but uh, Glenmore Two is basically uh, Glenmore One. But but uh, Glenmore Two is basically uh, Glenmore One with a few modules. So you you can play it without the modules and have basically the same experience. I have to say Glenmore One is probably the better game because it's okay like oh, it is now, now you're arguing <laughs> probably the better game because it's okay like oh, it is <laughs> now, now your argument's falling apart because you were like yeah 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 you don't need it you just need glenmore 2 and you made it sound like glenmore second edition i was like ooh, yeah and then yeah you glenmore one's better and i'm back down to yeah all right what's exactly next? move on i i understand yeah. one th- down to yeah all right what's exactly next? move on I understand. Yeah. 133, yeah. Freedom. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's another great game because it's actually hard to come by, at least here in Italy. But it, it's a game we, which talks about the slavery period in the US. It's a game we, which talks about the slavery period in the US. And you are trying to free slaves from various plantations and bring them to the north while trying to escape the slavers. It's, uh, it's a beautiful game. It's a gut punch to play. Make sacrifices to say of someone to save someone else. Uh, and uh, it's a very compelling game with a very compelling topic. So it's a recommendation uh, even just for the historical for the historical relevance back in print this one's important yeah mm-hmm. uh 132 we've got Cl- clans of caledonia which suffers from the glenmore effect for me at least <laughs> where i'm like i haven't played glenmore one yet how can i play clans of caledonia even though they i know they're not the least bit related but for some reason uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna you see i we can talk about that in a moment uh, we're yeah. definitely going to talk about that quite a bit. But Two Before It is a game that I almost talked about on the podcast on numerous occasions. And it is the most dull-looking box you can possibly see. <laughs> yes. My eyes, my eyes already gl- uh, glaze over. Yes. Yeah. So Newton, Newton is actually a delight. <laughs> it is a basically worker placement kind of card engine building game filled with more beige than your stomach could ever manage even if you spent your whole life eating beige you would still not have enough room to fit all of the beige within this game if eating beige you would still not have enough room to fit all of the beige within this game but it turns out this game is a phenomenal game especially played solo it's so interesting the puzzle ch- shifts and changes constantly you're moving around multiple different tracks you're collecting books in an exciting fashion which different tracks you're collecting books in an exciting fashion which i i normally wouldn't say i do collect books but i don't think they're exciting they're just pretty um it, it yes like <laughs> If you're at all curious about the brown box with the green apple on it and the name of the dead dude on the top, give it a go. With the green apple on it and the name of the dead dude on the top, give it a go. 
because yeah, Newton is like very good, especially solo. Um, and yeah, then, woo, let's get on to it. Uh, number one, two, seven. Yeah, you reviewed it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you reviewed it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Lost Expedition. Uh, and and you highly recommend it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's Pierre it's Sylvester. You know? Yeah, uh, all, yes, all his you, games are great. Every one of his games is great. This one's quite different to many of the others he makes as well, which is... This one's quite different to many of the others he makes as well, which is nice. And yeah, it's tight, it's difficult. The expansions, which I didn't talk about in my written review, because I wasn't talking, I didn't write about it in my written review, um, are, are really good. They mix things up in a whole bunch of different ways as well. And it's so cheap. It's, it's so cheap for how pretty it is. Like, there's just no reason to not own it. Yeah, it's uh, basically a very hard hand phase of Kingdom Death, basically. Be better <laughs> yeah. than, yeah. <laughs> so. Yep, definitely better than. They, I, I reckon if, if, if Mr. Poots had played uh, had played this, then he would have had a better hunt yeah. if he'd realized the parallels between what he was creating and yeah, what exactly. And Mr. Sylvester created. Yeah, that's Pierre Sylvester. Now there's one, two, four, Maki. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, so I take it neither of you played one, two, six, Flashpoint? Uh, no, not <laughs> no, yet. Okay, not yet. no, that's fine. I, I keep wanting, to, but I was hoping one of you played it so you could talk about it. <laughs> but no, so pity that. One, two, five is Ghost Stories, which is a game I used to own, but was too, mm -hmm. it's too exhausting solo. So what was it? One, two, four? Maki. Maki? Maki is... Uh, Maki. Yeah, but yeah. Ma Ma Vic Maki. Yeah, the French resistance uh, uh, of the Nazi occupation. And uh, it's Ooh. a worker placement game. I review... Audrey isn't here. C yeah. Before you carry on, c c does this mean we can break out terrible French accents for a moment and get away with it? Yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, well, I look forward uh, to playing the Maquis. So, pl play uh, Maquis. Maquis. That's how I like you, terrible yeah. man. <laughs> the jeu Maki is very interesting. There's, there's a lot of. Uh... <laughs> okay, okay, we'll, we'll stop. Go on, tell us about the, okay. the Maki's. She she'll kill us. So uh, basically, it's a worker placement game. Is a is a is a print and play, but it was produced with a very high produ production value. It's a great game. Uh, we have a review for it on the less than the patreon so if we already have a review for it that's what yeah. we need to say we're trying to get through these to get to the top 50 we're yeah. on two three now sherlock holmes can two three now sherlock holmes consulting detective in my opinion better oh. played with your partner two player yeah. it's really good though and there's tons of them then we go straight on to uh what uh 120, 120. which is flam rouge which we talked about before on the podcast so sling that one away yeah, one one eight. So battle uh, cross. One one seven. One one eight. All go. Okay, one one eight. Burgle. Yeah, one one eight. So battle uh, one, cross. One one seven. One one eight. All go. Okay, one one eight. Burgle Bros. Yes, we talked about that on the podcast. And one one seven. Calico on the podcast. Yeah, Rapid two. fire round. <laughs> Unbroken. One one six on the podcast. Unbroken. I, I, I'm going to do, get a very uh, long sigh because I've yet to receive it still. But a uh, very uh, long sigh because I've yet to receive it still. But uh, in any case, I'm very happy to see it that high and on the list for a game that, that's basically a brand new uh, creator or just slipping into, uh, into so high. 114 Next. is Sword and Sorcery, which I own and I need to talk about in the future in detail, but there's tons the future in detail, but there's tons of content. You could be playing it for a year. And some people say Midara made it irrelevant. For me, Sword and Sorcery makes Midara kind of irrelevant, but we'll talk <laughs> about that in the future. Um, uh, 110 we have Star Realm but maybe that's jumping too high uh, Star Realm which is an amazing uh, fun uh, highly recommended for people to, to try it 105 we have Barrage which is uh, a, g a game about managing da a dam uh, uh, overflowing with, with uh, mechanical components and a lot of stuff it's a very brainy game it's very interesting more into in the multiplayer than solo in my opinion but solo automa actually plays very smooth so yeah it's not a crazy automa it's a good automa and a good one to start with 
yeah, it's on my list of games um, that I want to get. Then there's 103, Raiders of the North Sea, which is the best of the North Sea trilogy. This is not the only time you're going to see a board game from Shem Phillips on this list, because for some reason, uh, uh, Garfield games do really good solo games. But um, it, it, that is, uh, it's, it's like not a very good deck drafting game. But then Explorers mm. of the North Sea is a nice pickup and delivery game with a good solo mode. Um, and we may see, we're going to see a variant of it in the future. And Raiders of the North Sea is the best one of the bunch where Shem really starts to like grow into his role as designing games and makes something pretty good. But he gets better. Blade Rod Inc. and 98 Welcome to are two very good solo roll and write games. Uh, actually, not, not necessarily solo, but... Uh, they can, are fully playable solo, which are very relaxing, very fun, and very cool as puzzles. And uh, for those, you can, can actually play them anytime you want on Board Game Arena. A uh, couple of them is not premium too, so they're actually recommended and able to try at any time you want. Where do you get your Board Game Arena merchandise? They said they'd hook you up for all the advertising <laughs> yeah, you give them. Yeah, I, 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 I'll try to remember. Your Board Game Arena merchandise. They said they'd hook you up for all the advertising yeah, you give them. Yeah, I, 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 I'll try to remember friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Railroad Inc., the great thing about that as well is you can literally chuck any YouTube video on of somebody playing Railroad Inc. and play against them. Like, you know, as an additional element against them like you know as an additional element to the solo game and the same with the one we're going to talk about at like in a short moment that one you can do as well but let's go to 100 because i believe this is a game i want to know about no i know it's i want to know about but i believe it's a game that alexis knows about uh so unfortunately i won't be able to tell you that much about it about it because i've only played the cult game and i love the card game the card game is great and i'm actually surprised to see the dice game here rather than the card version of fleet the dice game it seems year after year this people are rating this more and more and i really wanted to get my hands on it i might dip into the new weather machine get my hands on it i might dip into the new weather machine kickstarter with the purpose of getting access i think i can get access to fleet through that yes i think, I can. I think so so I might do it that way because it's constantly out of stock for me. Yes, uh, the the card game at the very least is an incredibly fun and quick, um, incredibly fun and quick. Um, how how do you say that in French? Like a family making uh, card game where you have to to collect different families of the different set types of collection. Fish. Set collection. Yeah, a set collection. That's the one. Uh, you have to, to collect different uh, sets of fish so that we, you can get more points. And it's really to collect different uh, sets of fish so that we, you can get more points. And it's really fun, really quick. And I, I love the team, uh, even though it's kind of boring. It's collecting fish, but I don't know why. It just it just works for me. And uh, I've heard that the, the dice game is great. And I keep seeing it higher on the on list like this than the... Yeah. Uh, nice one for me. Next one for me is 95. Well, um, there's a brief mention of Cascadia, which I keep regretting more and more that I didn't back the Kickstarter for. Oh. They've had hit after hit after hit. These these guys have been just knocking it out of the park. Um, flat out games, that is, I should say. Uh, they, did, they did a Calico tokens, and I didn't get it. But luckily, from what I've gathered, there's not much extra you get from having a Kickstarter copy compared to a normal one. So just get it in retail. Fine. Mm -hmm. And then 98 was Welcome to blank your yeah. name here um which is great really uh, enjoyable it. out on the podcast i we thoroughly about, recommend it i'm actually surprised not to see the legacy version which is even a, more fun as a solo it's, player I've it's rolling everything it. together under one entry on the list ah, okay. so if you actually look at the um rankings it's been falling um interestingly but ah. uh and had a bigger fall this year this year I've um, I've liked it a lot uh, the the legacy version as far as I played it so yeah pretty fun and, yep. and there's number eighty eight which is coffee roaster and uh, mm -hmm. this is cool because well it's a Japanese design so you have basically an essential game with, well it's a Japanese design so you have basically an essential game with tight decision making and that's cool actually you have a lot of options uh, in coffee roaster and you can make like i think uh, 30 different kinds of coffee 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As an Italian. 30 different kinds of coffee. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, as an Italian, I'm sure that you enjoy this a lot. Yeah, it's actually kind of. I, I'm not a good coffee roaster, so uh, not not a good co- coffee roaster myself. I prefer to make espressos with uh, already coffee roaster myself. I prefer to make espressos with uh, already uh, roasted beans, but yeah. mo- at most respect for the activity, which is great. Yeah, you see, on the star, you know, on the deck of the Enterprise, unless you would turn to the captain go damn it jim i'm a coffee drinker not a coffee maker <laughs> uh so you would turn to the captain go damn it jim i'm a coffee drinker not a coffee maker <laughs> uh, uh number 87 is baseball highlights 2045 that people keep saying and i'll paraphrase here i don't like baseball but i enjoy this game it's got a robot baseball dude on the front so i'm i'm going to assume that you still need to like on the front so i'm I'm going to assume that you still need to like baseball a little bit to enjoy a game like this. Uh, well, somebody, I'll quote the person here from the UK, really like this, even though I have no interest in baseball. Well, maybe. I maybe love I this one, even though then. I have minus one interest in baseball. <laughs> so uh, apparently, maybe... it's a baseball game for fans of and not baseball. Maybe I need to give it a look then. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, then there's that. That's pretty, pretty clever at 85. Gans um, schön clever. Yes, yes. Uh, Elder is... Sign at 84, which I very much enjoy. So I tend, I now play the app version only. It, it was labeled as the better alternative to Arkham Horror Final Hour. I still prefer the resolution mechanisms of Arkham Horror Final Hour, but it's a great game, yes. I just like rolling dice. It feels very Cthulhu <laughs> to roll dice and fail horribly. Uh, that's 4X, appears at 83, a game I keep thinking about talking about on the podcast, but it would need a lot more people to play it because it's big. And I, it's I, I want to give it a try. So. 4X. Hmm. I think it's the best 4X game ever well, released. Yeah, I'd yeah, be down so to, to give it a try with you then. <laughs> yep. cover, I haven't tried it. Uh, it's it's very light, accessible, uh, almost you know pandemic-y, but not you know. So you've got point-to-point movement, and you've got vet two monsters at any given time, so that mixes up the game a lot. And they've even released the American Monsters version. Uh, I can just I can recommend it if you can get it cheaply. It's it's six that I talked about a couple of episodes yeah. ago. I feel uh, it's great. I'm really happy to see it that I it's a true solo game. Like no way to play this one as a, with with other people, but it's a great solo game. Just bring it somewhere, uh, play with it when you when you have a few minutes. It's just it it works so well. And yeah, my really. notes are stuff. Uh, that's all right. For me, seventy-five. Yeah, there's seventy-eight. I want to briefly just say, Street Masters is fantastic, but super hard to get your hands on. Ah, oh, okay. Um, uh, Isle of Cats. I'm going to be talking about next year when the Kickstarter delivers the expansion and all the extra pieces. But there is a app version available that I got um, the code for because I backed Ooh. the Kickstarter. Isle of Cats is amazing. You know, polyomi nomi nomino place geometry on the board puzzles with cats and rats. It's a cat okay. placement game. Yes, it is. It's got a nice number of different versions as well to make sure it's accessible to um, to younger players, which is great. <laughs> the the next one then is seven to younger players, which is great. <laughs> the the next one then is seventy five. Uh, that's Agricola. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I I'm actually surprised that um that to see Agricola rather than Caverna. We need to to talk about it some days. Uh, I. I just heard my um uh, someone ringing at uh, I I just heard my um uh, someone ringing at my doorstep so I'll be right back you can continue there's a lot of dissing between Agricola and uh, Caverna fans so which one is the better which one Caverna. is the, yeah uh, I kind yeah. of like it because it's a bit more modern and it's uh, which one Caverna. Is the, yeah uh, I kind yeah. of like it because it's a bit more modern and it's not insanely yeah. punishing but I've played over 120 solo games of Agricola and I prefer Caverna any o- day. of course it's or, or actually the one after it Halatau <laughs> yeah Halatau yeah, yeah. Uh, although neither of those would top my list of it Halatau yeah Halatau yeah yeah. Uh, Although neither of those would top my list of Uwe Rosenberg solo games. 
uh, actually the, the good thing about Agricola is that uh, well I, I don't I don't know if I'm supposed to say this but it's on board game arena <laughs> so you can play it <laughs> you, you, you this but it's on board game arena <laughs> so you can play it <laughs> you, you, you're the one rolling in those big board game arena bucks so go ahead <laughs> why not um at 72 we've got root which we've talked about on the podcast and yeah the clockwork still continue to impress like yeah i agree the clockwork version 2.0 yeah fantastic. i agree the clockwork version 2.0 is great yep and then at 71 lucerda's best solo game in my opinion is Kanban EV the car manufacturing game all about making a car but really you're scored on how good an employee you are under the Kanban system yep. so it doesn't matter what you're making it could have been cut press impress and I'm back um, it's a great game and 70 is the game that I consistently fail to get anyone on this podcast to play so we can talk about it maybe you'll join in now and number 70 Zaya Legends of a Drift System Oh. I've been point. I've literally been pointing at my monitor, prodding it. Yes, this is amazing <laughs> solo. It's always good. Well, that's good to know. I need to I need to give it a try someday. Yep, uh, 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 we got I... terraforming Mars Ares, which uh, is a bit of a controversy. I don't think anyone's played it here, have they? No, it's number sixty-nine yeah, though, not. which is nice. And then at sixty-eight <laughs> is Alessio's pet project. Uh, what is this? Uh, Descent. Oh, the uh, Legend of the Dark. Yeah, th this is a great solo game. Actually, is an app-driven game, so it's perfect for solo. The only thing is, is that it's a table log, but uh, it's very fun to play. You can play it solo to end it, solo for end it, solo any way you like. Um, don't listen to people who say that the game is overly easy. Uh, it's true if you play for players, uh, it's overly easy for the fo first four uh, games. Uh, quests but after that the difficulty ramps up a bit and then you get to the end of the game where difficulty ramps ramps up a lot so it eventually will be a thought bond to chew and I think there's someone which is frantically searching uh, his desk for a stapler so <laughs> I don't know what's happening <laughs> I, there <laughs> those sounds will be yeah. ringing, so nobody has no, I'll keep nobody will feel talking about <laughs> the, the, people will just... think that you're crazy yeah, I was just going to say that um, it uh, it sounds like uh, somebody is calling out play people who go the game's too easy and saying, well, you gave up too quickly. <laughs> yeah. I, I know you've not played the whole thing. I got you right there. You're on my board. <laughs> I know you've not played the whole thing. I got you right there. You're on my board now. You're on my list. Call for you this year. Um, right behind that is Vice Counts of West Kingdom, another Shem Phillips game, another amazing solo game. So that's like yes do keep an have... eye out for everything that Shem Phillips is... do keep we an have... eye out for everything that Shem Phillips and, and Graphil games do do we have the entire West Kingdoms here yeah of course yeah <laughs> yeah most of the North Sea and the entire West Kingdom series are on here and even some ones that are based on the North Sea stuff is in here there's a they, lot they of geography based on the North Sea stuff is in here there's a they, lot they of geography they knock it out. It's, it's, I don't know what the proper name is for it, but I call it the Windrose series. They've done <laughs> three games for North. They've done three games for the West. They're, they're going to be doing South Tigris next, so three for South, and then they will assume they're going to do three for East. Um, <laughs> so 12 board game that lets you play all three games as a campaign. So maybe at the end of it all, they will give you another box where you play all 12 games as a continuous campaign through <laughs> each of the different campaign things. Who knows? Like, We'll find out. Um, there's Journey of uh, Lord of the Rings Journey to Middle Earth at 64, which I've heard mixed things about. But Aura is at 63, I, which I'm actually surprised that it's there and surprised mm. that it has already a uh, rating for 2020 and 2019. I don't think mm. that it was out two years ago, was it? I don't know either, but it is it is climbing like it it um, dipped down out to the top 200 in 2020 and it's up to 60 mm. I'm yeah, in um, the demo or something yeah yeah possibly uh tapestries at 62 which uh, is a really good game it's just really good so i had no idea the solo game was that well regarded uh mansions of madness at 60 surprised but then again um i mean it doesn't really but then again 
Um, I mean, it doesn't really need Good more game. players. It is, it's a nice app-driven exploration game that gives you the feel of, of, of a Call of Cthulhu case. And... Um, 59 is Gloom and Shadows of Killforth, which is the best talisman-style game in existence. It's amazing. Best talisman-style game in existence. It's amazing. Yeah, it is be... so clever and beautiful, although some of the art's a bit tasteless. Because not uh, not even Talisman is a good Talisman game. So No, no. Talisman's a good Monopoly game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse. Talisman's a good Monopoly game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse is at 58. i got to be honest. I don't know how people are managing to play Sentinels single player. I, I get so overwhelmed with everything that needs to be handled and done, even when I play the app version. I love the game. I love the setting. I, I love, like, their knockoff. Collect. I love the setting. I, I love like their knockoff collection of superheroes and supervillains. Um, but I don't. Yeah. Uh, we got it's a wonderful world at fifty-seven. Uh, well deserved its its place. I think it's a great game. Uh, I have not to play played uh, the solo version, but I can imagine that it is a lot of fun. Yep, and then uh, the solo version, but I can imagine that it is a lot of fun. Yep, and then at number fifty-six is Architects of West Kingdom. From Shem Phillips. Don't complete the West Kingdoms. This one, I'm going to briefly say, has amazing worker placement mechanics. When you put your workers on the board, they stay on the board. And as you play more, it builds up the local board. They stay on the board. And as you play more, it builds up the location that you played them at and makes that location stronger and more powerful. But other people can come in and capture those workers, taking them off the board, and then they can even chuck them in prison and get some money for doing it because the king doesn't want everyone loitering around. And it doesn't feel bad to the person it's happening to because they just need to go feel particularly bullied, which is great. 55's Nemesis, we talked about it. We talked about it. Yeah. I'm surprised to see it that high, honestly. Uh, especially as a solo game, because it has a lot of uh, moving pieces, and I would say that it's, it's more fun by with multiple people. Yeah, but the, the comic book is smart, so I can see that... I'm extremely surprised to see the next game so low. Well, I think it's an, access, it's an accessibility issue, because if Maybe. you look at the number of votes, it's 57 people voting on this. Uh, three people voted it number one, though, so this is Sleeping Gods. We have mentioned this in our previous episode. We're probably going to talk about this in some detail next the year, but Yeah, not by a lot. And it's got 12 number one votes this year. I mean, uh, as always, I think that the people that really like it, really liked it and will keep to liking it mm. until they go to the grave because yes. of the sunk cost fallacy. Well, to... I don't think it's necessarily sunk cost fallacy. To be fair, this is like <laughs> pretty much a lifestyle game and it, it, it expands. And if you let it, you don't get to play anything else. Well, it's a, uh, it's a pretty dead uh, lifestyle game. <laughs> Right now, yes, but just right now. just you wait. We we've got to believe I, that uh, sometime next year we're going to see this big shiny gambler's chest box. I'm going to accidentally step on my copy and put my foot through the lid. Shiny gambler's chest box. I'm going to accidentally step on my copy and put my foot through the lid and ruin its collectability. Um, once once the gambler's chest uh, comes out, I can definitely see Kingdom Death being uh, number number twenty or number ten. Uh, with no problem, but here it's it surprised me because it's been uh, five years uh, with no problem. But here it's it surprised me because it's been uh, five years that there's been no content. For yeah, but some people so. have received the the one point five printing, and that has like this new to that's them. True. And then there's going to be another wave of people who get the one point six printing, and that's going to be new to them. And there's people like us three who are sat there like, really, you've just discovered that, have you? <laughs> them. And there's people like us three who are sat there like, really, you've just discovered that, have you? You've learned that leather armor is good. Oh, do tell me more, Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory face. <laughs> Um, 52 is Space Hulk, Death Angel, amazing game. Yeah. Um, and now we've made it to the top 50. Oh. Oh, also, yeah. yeah. Um, and now we've made it to the top 50. Oh. Oh, also, I just wanted but, to finish oh, something with King Death. I don't no, see sure. it as a solo game at all. I, I think that it shouldn't be on a solo list. I think that if you're playing Kingdom Death solo, something terribly wrong has gone uh, with your... Hey, uh, hey I'm hey. playing solo. Hey, hey, <laughs> yeah. hey, I, I've, I've played... Hey, uh, hey, I'm hey. playing solo. Hey, 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 <laughs> yeah. I, I know that I've the both of you played solo. Yes. Yeah, I play solo on stream. It, I actually it's... prefer playing solo physically as well. It's 
it's a different game. There's less of the so emergent much, stories. so many moving parts. I can't yeah, keep track of everything. Sure. I find it fairly easy because how compartmentalized it is, but it also how compartmentalized it is, but it also I used to like pour through people's like accounts and yeah. records and everything for a living and pick out the interesting details and <laughs> nail them for it. So yeah. All right. Um so we'll get into the top 50 now. And um, that is number 50 is Hadrian's Wall, which um I, I, I keep looking at this. Yeah. I've heard Different artist, though, which um, I think actually holds it back a bit because people love, love the artwork for the West Kingdom stuff. Uh, Warp's Edge at 49. Oh. Hello. Yeah. Hey! Oh, hello, Audrey. Ah. Are you recording? Yes, I am. I have an opportunity ah. to come say hi. So, yeah, wonderful. I'm here for the hi, hello. We just talked about It's a Wonderful World a short while ago. Yeah, I I'm waiting for It's a Wonderful Kingdom that should arrive at my uh, game store next week, maybe. Have you, have you tried uh, It's a Wonderful World solo? Uh, solo I, w mode. I wanted to, and I ended up not trying it yet. Ah, well, you'll be able to give us an opinion whenever you do. A stab that It's a Wonderful Kingdom will make it onto this list next year, then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 48's One Deck Dungeon, boom. Yeah, yeah. Great, we talked great about solo it. Game. We have, we have, absolutely. 47 is one of many legendaries that have made it onto this list. This is legendary, a Marvel deck building game. Probably higher than the others because of the legendary game. Never have I. Uh, Honorim I... is at 45. Yeah, I am extremely shocked to see Arkham Oro as a 44 because once again, it's not a game that I feel anybody would play solo because no. hey, so many hey, hey, it's hey, massive. hey, 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 I play Arkham Horror 2nd Edition solo. Yeah, and because that's the, ga the game I it, have. And I have to say, uh, it, a lot of people love Call of Cthulhu, and a lot of people played Arkham Horror 2nd Edition as I, their first solo game. I like... I like Eldrick or uh, I would never play uh, Arkham or solo. I think that it's... Uh, I, uh, uh, if that helps, uh, every time I start a game of Arkham Horror 2nd Edition solo, I think why I started another game of Arkham Horror 2nd Edition solo. It's a lot long, with a lot <laughs> of <laughs> stuff happening, for having the, the, all, the, all the rush and all the cool parsing with a lot of <laughs> stuff happening, for having the the, all the all the rush and all the cool parts in the last uh, half an hour. It, it, it ah. is, but it's also really nice that the game has um, like it's complete. Everything's yeah. there. You can even get the expansion for the expansions if if you got it at the time. Everything's yeah. there. You can even get the expansion for the expansions if if you got it at the time. You don't have to worry about any new content coming for, out for it, which is what I like. Is now it's all there and it's so big and sprawling. There's many pieces to try and figure out and solve my personal cool. policy is to avoid uh, everything to do like and stuff i had avoided it for is to avoid uh, everything to do like and stuff i had avoided it for a while and then we played uh, uh an rpg session with alexis and i completely freaked out and that's enough for me never again <laughs> Okay, <laughs> my, my, my time is almost up, but I want to talk about number 43, because I keep it. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably get it on January, possibly, I don't know. I, I have given up hope, I'm just drifting... Uh... I just drifting mm -hmm. away. I, I, I uh, allowed someone French to piggyback on me when they reopened uh, the pledge manager for the extra stuff, and we, we don't forget to keep in touch to. convince that Audrey logged in just to mock me about Pentagrail now. No, it's, <laughs> it's a complete coincidence, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> Number 42, the answer Everdell. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. I should try the solo mode just so that I can be oh pretty pretty all the time. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and Fen is just back for number yep. forty. Uh, Race to the for the galaxy, which is an amazing game, mm. solo multiplayer. Whatever. Yeah, play play it with the app. Play it solo. Play it multiplayer. It. Play it two player. It's such a good game. And did you did you just briefly squee about Everdell? Yes. Fantastic, because Everdell's great. Um, oh, yes. Fantastic, because Everdell's great. Um, Audrey, no, Audrey was there to, to scream for Everdell. Great. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Um, 
We got um, Pax Premier at 37, second edition. Yeah, which uh, is basically the, uh, I have to say, there is Pax Premier and there is uh, the king is uh, uh, I have to say, there is Pax Premier and there is uh, the king is dead. The difference between the two in uh, playing solo is that king is dead has no automa. But the automa for Pax Premier, although the, the Wacken, uh, although being a bit complex to learn, like the Automa, although the, the Wacken, uh, although being a bit complex to learn, like the Automa for Roth, uh, is quite good in simulating uh, a three or four player games with just one opponent. So it's actually a fun game to play solo. It's uh, uh, just a warning. So it's actually a fun game to play solo. It's uh, uh, just a warning about this. It's uh, very, very recommended to at least uh, try a couple of games with other people because otherwise you will be overwhelmed for the first three, four, five plays. Uh, I people because otherwise you will be overwhelmed for the first three, four, five plays. Uh, I, I was keeping getting beaten at this game by the automa. It was so sad. <laughs> Well, 36 is Pandemic, which I think we talked a bit about it. So we talked about, uh, about yep. it a bit. It's a great game. It was... 36 is Pandemic, which I think we talked a bit about it. So we talked we about, uh, about yep. it a bit. It's a great game. It, was, it is. It works it well, is. so I think that the Legacy ones uh, work better. Uh, Pande so, but... uh, uh, shout out to Pandemic Fall of Rome, which was uh, way lower in the ranking, but it was pa a great Pandemic Rules is good as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, role player is thirty-five. I think yep. I talked about that on the podcast. Yeah, uh, great. Uh, yeah, Maracaibo's at thirty-four, which I have on my shelf and I keep meaning to play uh, to talk about. So I've, knowing that the solo game is so good, it's going to make learning easier. Uh, number three is cartographers, which I'm surprised it's so heavy. I guess it's just that kind of itch of drawing a map and uh, the roll and write experience. No, it's just and fun to play. Yeah, it is just fun to play. I, I, I've played tons of games of it over this week without realizing it was on this. Um, Dawn of the Zeds is at 32, which is one I've often looked at. Uh, at 31's Friday, which is... The, the quintessential solo game. Um, it's it's great. There's an app. The app is a bit janky, but it's it's just such a fun game to play with. So it's a classic. Then This War of Mine is at 30. And solo, yes, this game pulls no punches. It's yeah, really good. Yeah, this is the first Awaken Realms. I lose the first 20 games that you have with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's extremely harsh. Absolutely. S sometimes even uh, a bit too uh, RNG uh, mean sometimes, where you just will, oh, I have an event. Oh, my two of my guys are dead. One of them is too exhausted. <laughs> yeah, but solo players love this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's... Absolutely. It just takes a long time to get through it. It doesn't have a good pack away setup kind of system. Yeah. So you really got to dedicate and go, okay, I'm going to keep this. Like maybe you have a table with a, um, you know, a gaming well underneath it. And so you can be like, I'm going to keep this. Weather. Um, definitely good and definitely worth chasing up. And I think quite nice in that you can get most of it retail. Yeah. Uh, at least I did. And it didn't feel like I was missing anything. Um, at 28, we've got Paladins of the West Kingdom. Oh, it was a, it was a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, told you. And then at 27, we have Cloud Spire, which I have heard has really good like scenarios for solo play. But Alexis, you heard some stuff? Uh, no, no, I just uh, no, just noted to it note because it. I I was a bit surprised that it was already out. Basically, I, I yeah. I I actually uh, was a lot interested in Cloud Spire. I think it it. Uh, is a, was a lot interested in Cloud Spire. I think it it uh, is a great chip theory game, but uh, I have no first hand uh, account of this, so I won't comment. Okay, well, in which case, I will simply direct you to no pun included review of it, video review. Efka talks about what he likes. Okay. Simply direct you to no pun included 
review of it, video review. Efka talks about what he likes okay. and doesn't like about it, does a very good review. Uh, Underwater Cities is at 26. I'm surprised because, oh my goodness, this game is soul crushing. You're supposed to score 100 points. You can only do that in like perfect situations. So most of the time you're just like, you can only do that in like perfect situations. So most of the time you're just like, well, I scored reasonably well. I did better than I did last time, but I have still lost according to the rules of the game. And it goes up to 125 points with the expansion. However, honestly, honestly, like, so good. So very, very good. Well, that's okay. good to know. I leave you... So very, very good. Well, that's okay. Good to know. I leave you for the top 25 mm. because my time that's is really up. Yeah, that's a shame. But um, uh, I'm happy that the number one is the number one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I hope that you have a, a good uh, end of the day. Yeah, yeah. you too. Uh, I hope that you have a, a good uh, end of the day. Yeah, you too. Uh, bye bye. Uh, bye, let's bye. Yeah, bye bye, everyone. Uh, Lost Run of Arnak at 25. We talked about that on the podcast. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's it's a great game. And I'm still not enamored with it, especially as a solo game. I think the better version is higher up in this list. Yeah. And we'll get to it. Uh, Vita Cultures at 24. Uh, very much deserve its place. Uh, it's a great little wine game. I love uh, to play it with my family. It's uh, it's it's a nice game to to put up with your with your loved one, as long as they like wine. Yeah, um, this is one which because the this was before Stone Meyer started doing good inserts, um, and the insert I got has everything fall out of it if I don't store it completely flat horizontal all the time. <laughs> which is frustrating uh dune imperium this is is it 23 which is what i meant about the better yeah. <laughs> lost ruins um it's really good solo and yeah i know but david david lynch did the previous one and david lynch is normally great but he didn't manage it with dune so david lynch would have done the the weird uh body or bits regarding the the warm stuff extremely well a uh, few uh movies in yeah, well, I have to say, like, um, the scene with uh, the boss field nerves, I was just like, uh, okay. It, yeah. It looks, and maybe it's the actor, he, he's he's very good, but I don't think he sold what was happening to him in that scene. No, I, no. I've, I've only seen the new one, so I cannot do the comparison appropriately. I'm sorry. No, no, don't worry, that's, <laughs> that's all right. Appropriately, I'm sorry. No, no, don't worry, that's, that's all right. How did, did I... you enjoy it? Yeah, I didn't really think it was bad. I thought it was quite good. Yeah, there were a few things that were off here and there, but overall it was good. Yeah, yeah, I, that's kind of the Dune story for me. People like... It was good. Yeah, yeah, I, that's kind of the Dune story for me. People like rave about it, and I guess because it broke ground, it's so like significant and important, but I... I came into reading it like after I'd read The Expanse, you know, and, and I was like, yeah, uh, I, re I read Dune when I was, you know, and, and I was like, yeah, I, re uh, I read Dune when I was, I think, uh, 10 and I didn't understand half of it. <laughs> so there, there is some serious trauma there. Do don't worry, past uh, the first uh, couple of books, nobody understands anything. Yeah, I, w I went to the one... Uh, yeah, I, w I went to the one uh, after uh, the kids' uh, sandworm mix-up story. And I, it has, yeah. In French, it's called The House of the Mothers, La Maison des Mères, uh, yeah. but it has a completely different title in English, so I cannot remember uh, which is... Uh, it, is, I cannot remember uh, which is uh, his actual English name, but I, I opened the book and I read, I think, a few chapters, no, not even chapters, but paragraphs, and, and I was like, what am I reading there? <laughs> there is no link with what I read before. I was completely lost. Yeah, uh, I, I kind of, I, I read the first book and went, oh, it's okay, I was not, not worth raving about. I read the plots to the others and I was like, oh, geez, he, he turns into a giant sandworm? <laughs> yes, he does. Woof, okay, <laughs> it goes to some very weird places. Uh, uh, so, yeah. yeah, that's due. Uh, 22 is Anachrony, which um, is heavy as heck, but really good. I've it heard is, it is, yeah. Yeah, travel mechanics done right, where you can, like, deliver yourself resources from the future to use right now but you better make sure you send them back to yourself a bit later in the game otherwise you're going to cause some problems for yourself because of time paradoxes my boyfriend would probably love that yeah, yeah it's you get to like stamp plastic models which have no 
use. Um, but they look cool. You slot your little worker token in the top and send them out into the, the horrible toxic wasteland outside. It's pretty fun. Uh, 21's Eldritch Horror, which we briefly touched on. It's really good, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's like, I, I still want to keep of this game so much. It's, they really nailed the globe trotting feel of a, a conspiracy. Like, great in a short time frame. It's it's a great game. I, again, I don't think I would play it as a solo game, but it's it's really fun. It, it's, um, it, you want to crank the difficulty if you play it as a solo game. Yeah. Um, Seventh Continent at number if you play it as a solo game. Yeah. Um, Seventh Continent at number 20. We've, great solo think... game. Great, great game uh, to, to play uh, in yeah. general. It's, yeah. It's really fun. Yeah, it is. It's it is. Um, it's it's a hot mess. I think is what I'd say. Yes. Which doesn't mean it's it's a bad experience. Um, I I feel like uh, the Seven Citadel. Experience. Um, I but... I feel like uh, the Seven Citadel is going to be like a refined version of it, and it's going to be climbing to the top extremely quickly. Yeah, I hope so as well. I think that's possible. Um, then number nineteen is a game that keeps cropping up on our lists of we should talk about this, but then we inevitably don't. Yes. Nemo's War. We should talk about this, but then we inevitably don't. Yes, Nemo's War, which is a game that apparently has a multiplayer ga uh, game mode, but they are lying to you. It's a solo game <laughs> where you tell your friend what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. The the co I, I think two player maybe is the most you could do at this, and then you still don't play the multiplayer rules really. I, I think two player maybe is the most you could do at this, and then you still don't play the multiplayer rules really. Yeah. It's my turn to be the captain now. Yeah, it's um, it's great. I like it a lot. It's really well balanced, and I like the the way you can pick a different Captain Nemo focus at the start to yes. like try different experiences, which is very to yes. like try different experiences, which is very interesting. Like sailing around, uh, you know, bringing getting all the natives restless and ready to revolt, and everything is fantastic. Uh, Sprawl Opposite, Sprawl Opolis is number eighteen, which I'm I'm impressed it's this high up. This is a like, it's got hardly I'm I'm impressed it's this high up. This is a like, it's got hardly any cards. It's a really small game, just like a, a tiny deck of cards. It's so densely packed in how they fitted everything onto these cards, and it's a great game. It's really good, but um, I I prefer to play it cooperatively. Um. I used yet to to play it too mm. I, I recommend it it's so cheap to get it's like not expensive at all it's just it sells out really fast uh Nusford is next which i have officially said is my favorite uve rosenberg game oh it's um set in the norwegian fishing village these days is just basically a historical tourist site uh, but it was like a booming fishing capital and he he portrays it during the the most like extravagant and booming time of its period where there was just fish 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 everywhere and that's what the game's like and uh, uh, like many of Uwe's games where you he's very really trying to to race against everyone else and get that family enlarged before every new anyone else does Nisford is just like hey do you like fish well I hope you like fish because you're having some fish and next turn you're getting more fish and the turn after <laughs> that you're getting even more fish until you've got so many fish you're having to throw them away and it's just it's generous and even the sighting and fun to play um, it's really good great game next one Alessio is unfortunately not there to rave about Wingspan so we'll just say Wingspan's quite good so yeah, yeah that's great and Pretty Imperium great. Classics Alessio was going to talk a lot about this I'm sure um, uh, great game too it is a good game I think it's a bit long for uh, great game too it is a good game i think it's a bit long for what it is but i will always respect it for actually treating the celts and the celtic mythology correctly unlike many games uh, under falling skies is number 14 which i've said before i i didn't enjoy this as much but i had more fun with it once i once i threw the campaign out so to speak and just played the randomized game but effectively it's space invaders the dice game now, perfectly enjoyable. And Scythe? I'm surprised Scythe is this high. I haven't played it, so I cannot comment. <laughs> I'm surprised is it, it is this high as a solo game. As a, as a like multiplayer game, it's great. It's, it's really fun. Like Everybody knows that. But I've never played it solo, and I didn't even know that it had a solo uh, mode. It so. does. It has automata and um, decks. Yeah. And automata decks? Automata, whatever. Automato decks. And 
uh, I've played with them and they're really good and well designed. But I've always played team size number while we were playing through um, the Fenris to have like a automated bot to race against. Uh, maybe I should look into playing this with all of them, like just because I've got enough decks, I could play all me versus all the bots. Um, that would be probably exhausting. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, number twelve, a feast for Odin. Yeah. is Really good. Like, I've I've heard good. a lot of good stuff about it. Yeah, I, I have it with the Norwegians expansion, and um, the main problem with it is you're looking at three hours. But the good thing about that is it's three hours you're going to enjoy that will fly by. Uh, mm. Number eleven, Gaia Project, which is kind of the sci-fi version of Terra uh, Terra Mystica. Um, I prefer Gaia Project, but I haven't I haven't owned it since I moved over here. So as much as I say I like it, I did sell it. Um, but I keep thinking about buying it again. I did sell it. Um, but I keep thinking about buying it again. It's very expensive. Uh, number 10 is Robinson Crusoe. Which, which I am waiting about. on now. Yep, we, we talked about this one a bit. We're waiting on it. It's it's such a good solo game. It's such a good cooperative game. I, I feel like it does. it's such a good solo game. It's such a good cooperative game. I, I feel like it doesn't suffer from alpha player syndrome, where players are constantly trying to, you know, one person telling everyone else what to do. Um, and then we have at number nine, Eon yeah! Zen. Such a good... Uh, a good such a good uh, a good place for this game and it's it's really well deserved so yeah definitely really well deserved yeah and um, so i will do now my standy catch up bit because now i have played two chapters of the legacy version oh Ooh. you received it yeah i showed the picture discord for a few days because i i went job. to i went to the store and i said i want it and they said it's not on the shelves yet and i said i want it and i got it <laughs> Wonderful. You said, do you know who I am? <laughs> no, it's it's the second time during the year that I do this. The first time was for Everdell. And uh, yeah, it's a very diff it's a different take, but uh, it's very good in solo, very good in multiplayer. Uh, I think, though, that the best number of players is free, but uh, to have a Joker. Uh, the Joker term is, uh, is great, but yeah, it, it's still a good game, a good mechanics, good 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 everything so yeah okay and i have my legacy copy waiting for when my friends come over from the uk um, <laughs> so i'm looking forward to that uh, number eight is lord of the rings the card game which honestly i'm a bit surprised about because i played this and maybe it's because i played it when it first came out um when did it come out it was like it's a pretty old game now um when did it come out? It was like, it's a pretty old game now. Uh, it's, uh, been and I had a, it's been years. It's been years. 2011. 2011. Oh, 11. And at that time, the meta was you had to build decks that endlessly recycled themselves and recycled cards because otherwise you'd run out of resources while playing the stories. I assume that the Fantasy Flight addressed that, given the resources while playing the stories. I assume that the Fantasy Flight addressed that, given that it's uh, it's been holding a place in the top 10 for eight, the top 100 for eight years, and it's been number eight or number nine in the past like three years so uh obviously it's it's got legs um number seven's too many bones uh obviously it's it's got legs um number seven's too many bones uh a bit surprised that it's this high i mean it's a great game uh no no surprise there but uh yeah number number seven is kind of surprising yeah i was gonna yeah i was gonna say and I, i've looked at the numbers they yeah I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say, and I, I've looked at the numbers they've got here. It is, a, it's a lifestyle game. It's got forty-two people voting at number one. So this yeah. is again this kind of game that it just takes over. So if you get into it, it's just here we are. Too many bones. It's too many bones night. It's too many bones night, and it's really <laughs> replay. Many bones. It's too many bones night. It's too many bones night, and it's really <laughs> replayable. It's it's got that yes. whole same that, thing as Kingdom Death. That mechanic of that you really. could just do another run. You could mix up the elements and change some things, and the experience will be a bit different. Uh, I'm surprised about the next one, which is Terraforming Mars at number six. Really good game, but I next one, which is Terraforming Mars at number six. Really good game, but I'm not a big fan of the solo version. It's I've yet to try the solo version. I've always kind of heard that it wasn't that uh, wasn't that fun. 
well, the, the masses have spoken, and uh, yeah, apparently it, it, apparently it had number three it does have the race for the galaxy esque card engine, yeah, kind of stuff going on, which is always fun to play solo because you build your engine, you run your engine, and then you refine and make it better and better, um, which is what Furnace does, which I got today. I talked about the head of the episode. That's an engine builder. Uh, I, um, I have the terraforming mouse. Uh... A, a bit of a... Do you know that feeling of when they get it right of space and you feel how vast space is? And you're like... Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it feels like that when you're looking down on Mars for the, the development of it all. Um, unfortunately, I believe they said they're not adding any more expansions or they don't plan to at the moment, which is a shame because card game is an app. Because it's so good. Yeah. Number five is fantastic. I love the adventures. I love the way you can customize your character after you've played and replayed. They even did the whole series of like return to, so you can return to an adventure you've played before, but stuff's been mixed up to to change the increase the difficulty to to change the increase the difficulty. It's the only problem with Arkham Horror is how overwhelming it is to kind of first get into, but they've just done a new core box. Um, like and redone it all and made it like taken onto account people's feedback and everything so honestly best time ever to count people's feedback and everything so honestly best time ever to get into arkham horror the card game really good just just such a good cooperative adventure game <sighs> we know number four don't we we've talked about it earlier it's gloomhaven yeah gloomhaven uh not surprising that it's number four i'm going no. to guess that next year it will be frosthaven uh, but it's number four. I'm going no. to guess that next year it will be Frosthaven. Uh, uh, will take its place. Um, I think both of them will be on the list. But oh, I yeah, think yeah, maybe but Gloomhaven but I... will get knocked down a bit because Frosthaven yeah. will push above it, I'd imagine. I th That's what I think. I think that it's just a small bit too high for a solo game. Just a small bit too high for a solo game. Because uh, for a solo there's too much stuff to handle. There is yeah. a lot, yeah, definitely. It's it's definitely one for people who are okay playing a heavy game solo. Um, yeah. I prefer playing it two-player because you're doing so much operating the game. I prefer playing it two-player because you're doing so much operating the game that you kind of lose what's good yeah. play-wise and being able to share that with someone else. Yeah, two or, needs... or maybe three. Uh... Yeah. I actually think like Gloomhaven is interestingly like great with four players, which is like Gloomhaven is interestingly like great with four players, which is unusual for that for considering what it is. Yeah. Uh, number three is Marvel Champions: The Card Game. I haven't played I ha it. I have it. It's really good. The big thing is it it doesn't take off until you get to the campaign expansion. But they are so interesting. The characters are really well done. You don't have to customize your decks if you don't want to. It's it's very much um, a sibling of the Arkham Horror card game, which tells you how good this system is because two variants on it are sitting in the top five. Um, I, I, I just can't recommend this highly enough. You really like or characters like I got Drax for my partner um, and I got myself Wasp and Scarlet Witch. And uh, we have a, a fantastic time. Oh, and Nebula. I got Nebula because Nebula's great. Um, so, number two, I almost, like, I, I was, but number two is Mage Knight Ultimate Edition. I still haven't played it. It's been on my list of games to play for a while, but it's just, it has just been pushing it back so much. It's $200, uh, but it's Mage Knight, yeah. Yeah, uh, so you, you don't have it? I don't have it, no. Okay, yet. well, here you go. Here you are. For all of your work you've done. Oh. Yep. I was wow. talking I was thinking about doing it and I was gonna do it as a surprise and now I'm gonna spring the surprise on you. That's, oh, that's damn. Yep, yep. That's my thank you for all the editing you do. Well, thank you, Fen. Because I have I have Ultimate Edition and then I have a copy of the original game and I have one of the expansion characters and uh, I I yeah, accept that. Yep, you're, you're well, welcome. You'll have a chance to see what it's like. Yeah, I can't wait to, to talk about it in the podcast then. Yep, it's it's good. Thanks. It's really good. It's heavy though. It takes a... Like... Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to ask, uh, isn't that uh, high uh, again uh, as a solo game? Uh, same reasons as Blue. I've... It is heavyweight, but I think actually it's it's more internalizing the rules and understanding how the game flows as opposed to bookkeeping because so much of what you're doing to track your character is just a deck of cards really um 
and a map so it's once you get your head around how it works it is fantastic um i i, I will say it's a shame the miniatures look like ass yeah <laughs> one, one of them literally has she looks like the mouth of sauron like she just has uh, a gigantic set of teeth and grin and rick grinny rictus across her face um instead of eyes it's awful which is a real shame because the instead of eyes it's awful which is a real shame because the artwork for the characters is stunning um but if you get super into it there's a chap on board game geek who did custom sculpts for every single character in the game and he sells them i think via etsy or through direct contact something like that oh. and think via etsy or through direct contact something like that oh. and they look like the original artwork so alternatives are available and if you love it, you might want them because these characters deserve to not look like uh, toys that have been chewed by a little child. <laughs> um, which leaves us with number one. Leaves us with number one, which is a board game we keep not putting off talking about because we're not sure if we can do it justice. Yeah. Uh, this is Spirit Island, and I'm I'm not surprised, but I wouldn't put this as my number one solo game. Because I love it so much, two-player. Wise, it's one of the best game around. It, yeah, it's really good. The app is really well done. Um, I know that uh, Trent Dennison, Big Dino, is a huge fan of this game. He is bonkers good at it. He plays like the um, all the colonial like hard mode stuff, and he's just with this far too much. <laughs> uh, it's impressive. Um, I'm still on the medium complexity spirits myself. I can't. I can't get past that level of difficulty. It's so deep, um, and such a good message and everything. It's fantastic. Yeah, I keep hearing good stuff about it. I've uh, considering a convention uh, as a as a cooperative game, uh, but I've not like delved into the depth of it, and uh, and I can't wait to to get more into into it. It's it's also beautiful. It is. It's beautiful. Uh, everybody, I'm sure everybody is pointed this out one time or another, but I think it's a great statement all of another, but I think it's a great statement. All of the invading pieces are plastic and the defending pieces are made out of natural materials, yes. wood and cardboard, which is really a nice thing. And this isn't even an accident. This is deliberately done. This whole game is a very much a deliberate statement about colonialism. Such a deliberate statement about colonialism sucks which it does yeah um and yeah it's oh david um david has this i believe uh yes uh, he does yes he does he does um i'm still chasing and waiting on getting the second promo um still chasing and waiting on getting the second promo um i it sells out the moment it gets onto the store, so I'm waiting for my local stockist because they they've put up a page that says uh, register if you're interested, and they they did that for the first one, and they actually got it in stock, and I bought a copy from them. Oh. So they did that for the first one, and they actually got it in stock, and I bought a copy from them. Oh. So I'm trying to get the second promo. I'm hoping they do the same again, and I can swoop in because I seem to be a little ahead of the general Swedish like gaming populace when it comes to what's really hot. Um, but only until sh shut up and sit down talk about it. As soon as they talk about it, it only until sh shut up and sit down talk about it. As soon as they talk about it, it it's just like all podcasting. Just, just like everywhere, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Has shut up and sit down done a video about this? Nope. Then um, you're not there yet, and it's, it's just true. Like uh, n people talk about how being on Dice Tower and people talk about how being on dice tower and shut up and sit down is a massive bump for for um for you so yeah i mean it is it is it is and that's Although uh, I, that's the list yeah. oh yeah that is there no so that that was gonna say that that is the list that's um that's it i too I many entries from shem phillips are on the list all right so on that note this is all we have time for in this episode. You can catch us over at www.patreon.com forward slash the last standee or as the last standee on Twitter. So until next time, we have been the last standee and this is going to be uh, from Belgium. Au revoir. It's goodbye from Audrey. Bye bye. 
uh, Alessio, who was here and has disappeared. Um, and then it's goodbye from myself. And remember that the second E in Standy is for escorted. <laughs>